Hi, welcome to Puff Workshop. Today in VCar Pro, I'm getting started with 3D carving for you. Now, I want to be able to take a very simple project like this and go from beginning to the actual conclusion of the project and show you just how easy it is to do the 3D carving. It's not that bad. Now, I'm not going to go through every single little icon in the VCar Pro, but I am going to show you the ones that's necessary to get you up and running. So let's get started. In the recent videos that I've done, I stopped asking for people to be able to like, subscribe, and share the video. And those algorithms just plummeted. So please, I'm going to ask again if you would help me out to be able to drive the algorithms. And if you're new to the channel, by all means, please hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so that you can be notified of the various uh, videos that I upload. And please like and share this. When you like the video, it helps to drive those algorithms to be able to get this video out to all kinds of different people everywhere. So please help me out by subscribing, like, and share this video. So let's get back to today's project. Today what I want to do is show you how we can actually uh, carve this eagle's head. And this is by far the simplest uh, 3D that you can actually do. And I want to show you just how simple it is. And then we're actually going to go over to the CNC machine and carve this project. So what I want to do is start with a brand new page. So I'm going to close. Well, let's just do this. I'm going to click new. And no, I'm not going to save this. So here we go. We're at a brand new page. Now this project is just going to be done on a piece of scrap wood that I have and it is 11 and a quarter by nine and a half. So that's the measurements that we're going to be using and it is three quarters of an inch. Now we are going to stay in inches today and as far as the Z zero position, I'm keeping that on the material surface. And for this design today, we're going to use the center point as our XY datum position. Now, because we're doing a 3D design, we do need to consider the model resolution. And what I want to do is select the high. Standard would be the fastest. And basically what this is, it really determines how many pixels that is being used in the software to help generate the uh, the project itself. It's not going to change how it's really presented on the screen, but it is going to change how it calculates the number of pixels that it needs to be able to produce the final project. And standard, of course, is going to be the lowest number, and it's going to be able to calculate the fastest. And for this one, I think I'm just going to select high. It's three times the amount of pixels that it's going to be uh, developing, so it is going to be processing three times slower. And then you have a very high. You can go even higher, but I don't want to talk about that on uh, this video. So I want to select high. The Canadian maple will be fine. And then I'll just click OK. One of the nice things about the VCar Pro is when you purchase it, you also get a lot of the clip art. So I can come right down here at the bottom and click on that. And then I have two different categories. Uh, we have a clip art and then we have the design and make. You can go to design and make and they have a lot of different uh, projects and things that you can download and purchase. The clip art, however, there's an awful lot of it that is actually free that comes with the software. And you can scroll down and see the different projects. And there's a lot of different ones. And what I'm going to do today is work with the eagles. And 
there's three different types here. And I want to go ahead and bring this in. And I'm going to scale this down. And uh, I want to slide that right. Whoops. I'm going to bring this little guy right up here. And I want to scale him down. Because I want to be able to show you. And then the second one. And this is the Eagle Head A. This is the Eagle Head B. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just grab the little arm. We'll pull it down. And we'll slide it up over here. And then this is C. All right, we'll scale it down. All right, and we'll keep it on the page. Now, those are the three different types. Now, one of the things when you're working with the 3D models, it's really difficult to be able to see exactly what it's going to look like. So what you can do is come right up here, and you can select this, and now you can actually get a real good representation. If you want to see it left and right, you can do it this way. Now, here's the big difference. This one is actually raised off of the surface. If you're working with my three quarter inch board, what will happen is it will cut away the material and leave this higher than the surface around it. This one is actually into a dish and it will cut down and this is gonna be below the surface. And this one gives more of that hand carved look and it is also below the surface. What I want to be able to do today is be able to work with this one right here. It's my eagle head, and it's the B. It's the simplest one to start with, and um, quite frankly, between this one and C, for this little guy, they're basically identical. This one will take more work to build a setup, and I'll do this one or something similar in a very near video. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and delete this out. This is the one that I'm going to work with. All right, first thing I want to do is go ahead and get this back into the center. So what I'm going to do is come over to the Drawing tab, and then I am going to click this icon right here and hit Center, and now it moves it. And you notice it moves it both of them so you can see exactly what's taking place. When you're working with the 3D, you don't want to have a lot of white space around your project. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and let this get larger. We're going to make it larger today. There we go. And then I'll go ahead and center it again. And actually, I think I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. All right, that I think looks good. When you look at this, this is what the image is going to look like when you actually carve it. But there are some things that we need to be able to do to this to be able to get the tool paths to be able to work correctly. And one of the things is we know that our material is three quarters of an inch thick. But how thick is this project itself? So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. And we're going to come down, first I'm going to close out this, and we're going to come down to the Modeling tab, and I am going to click on this icon right there. And now we can actually see exactly how high this particular object is. It's 0.6674 of an inch. Now if that's going to be a little bit too thick, we can actually change that. So we can change it by being able to decrease it this way and it will update and show you the difference. And you can see how that looks as I turn it. Or if I want to be able to put it back, I can increase that. It really depends on the overall look that I'm trying to achieve. What you don't want to have happen is for this eagle to be above the surface. As far as the fade and the tilt, I'm going to talk about that in another video.
Now, when you look at this, and I turn this up on the side, you're looking at this disc, and it just kind of looks like it's floating, and there's no real reference points here for the computer to be able to follow. I'm going to put this back on this mode. So what I want to be able to do is basically show a zero plate. So this will actually simulate, if you will, the surface of the material. So I'm going to go over here and click on the modeling tab. This one is add to zero height. And that's where it puts in this surface. And when you look at that, now it gives it a reference to be able to follow. And you can look right down that line and it looks pretty good. But is it standing a little proud? Let's take a look. Let me set that back. And let's go back over here to my height. And now you can see with me putting in this zero plane in here, the actual height is 0.593, maximum Z height is 0.593, and this maximum is zero. So that means it's below the surface. So at this point, I'm ready to set up the tool paths. Now on a project like this, as far as the tool paths, I could actually do it in one tool path. But I'm going to go ahead and take a look at doing it with two. So I'm going to go ahead and click this one right here, bring it over to the tool paths. And the first one that I want to look at is this roughing tool path. And this has a quarter of an inch end mill set up, and I happen to have a quarter inch end mill, so I can select that. I want to be able to have this stay with the model boundary, and that model boundary is going to be established right there. If I had put in a vector in here, I could have gone with a selected vector, and that vector would have stopped it also, but this should work just fine. And as far as the offset boundary, I think I'm going to put in about a 0 0.04. Now what that will do is means that that bit will come up to the edge, but it's not going to go all the way to the edge. The finishing bit will take care of that. This next box is machining allowance. And this also is set, and this was by default, at 0 .04. Meaning as it's doing the roughing pass, it's going to leave 0 .04 of the material still there so that the uh, finishing pass bit can come through and clean that up. As far as this roughing strategy, you can go with the Z level and it will just work its way across. Or you could go with the 3D rasper and go that direction. We're just going to leave it this way and we'll take a look at it. I don't need to do the ramp and plunge. This is all fine. And so I want to calculate this. Then we'll reset this preview and I want to set it and that's what it's going to look like. So that will take care of the roughing pass. And now I want to close this and let's go back and select the finishing pass. This has got an eighth inch ball nose and that's the only ball nose bit that I have. So we're going to use that one. This is going to be with the model boundary again. This time we're going to have zero offset. It's going to carve would be the offset. Let's take a look at how that's going to look. And this is the 3D finishing pass. And let's calculate that. And you notice it takes a little bit longer to calculate it because we have it on the high setting. And at this point, let's reset this preview and there we go. That's what it's going to look like. If I don't want that, let's double check, click on that. Let's do the Rasper strategy. And we can do the zero angle. And let's calculate that. And there we have that. So we'll reset this. And that's how it's going to look. It's going to start at the bottom and work all the way across, all the way to the top. Now what I'd like to do is go back over here for just a moment and highlight this. And I want to go back to the modeling 
and I want to be able to put the vector in and then I want to come back and take a look at what happens when I have that calculated. So let's go back to the roughing pass. We'll take a look at it. And this time we're going to select the vector. I need to select the vector though. There we go. Now we selected vector. We we'll still keep our allowance in here. And we'll go ahead and calculate it now. And now you can see exactly what's happening. It's going to stay that 0 0.04 off of the surface. Let's reset it and let's carve this. There you go. Let's go through the finishing pass. And we're going to do the selected vector on this one. And no boundary here. And I think that will look good. Let's calculate that. All right, and now let's reset it and preview it. So I think that's going to look good. I'm going to go ahead and save these, and we're going to go over to the machine and carve this. Now, the one thing I want to be able to check a look at, too, is see how long it's going to take to carve this. So I can come back over and click on this one. It's going to take quite a while. It's going to take about three hours to be able to carve it. So if I come back in here, and let's go ahead and do the roughing pass again. And we're going to do with the selected vector. We'll keep these all the same. And I'm going to go ahead and calculate this. We're going to switch these because I certainly would want the roughing pass to be done first. So now we have the roughing pass and then the finishing pass. We'll close that. We'll check on our time again. And let's see if that reduced the time any. We'll close this out. We'll come back over to our time. And it's still showing the same time. But it's adding the hour in for the roughing pass. And then it's adding the 3 hours and 24 minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that roughing pass. And we're going to do this with just the one bit. Okay, I'm going to change the name of this just to do a eagle so I can find it easily. And that's going to be the 3D uh, finish. And we're going to recalculate this. Anytime you make any changes, you got to just come back and recalculate it. And I want to just do this so that you guys can see what it looks like. I think that's going to be a pretty nice looking eagle. We're going to close this portion out and save the tool path. And this post processor is fine. So I'm just going to click on save the tool path. And this is going to be eagle 3D. Now we had the X, Y, zero position in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and mark an X right in the center of this project board. So this will be my X, Y, zero home position right there. And I think what I'm going to do, because we're making the circle in this area, I'm just going to go ahead and screw this in the four corners because it's not going to move outside of that circle. Now on the occasions where I use these screws to be able to hold it down, with this MVF, it will actually raise up the surface and it can actually change your height. So one of the things that I do with that is after I finish carbon, I make sure that I take a chisel and just knock off those high spots so I don't have that issue. So I'm not going to go ahead and set this right here on the line that I had set up on my machine where I used the XY0 position. And this way I know that it's square. And then I'm just going to take the screws and screw it in. And two actually should be plenty. I'm not going to put four in there. Now this is the bit that I'm using. This is an eighth inch ball nose. There's two flute. 
And this is an upcut bit. Now, one thing that I didn't mention, and I'm sure there'll be some questions on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer it now. And I'll try to mention this again in another place in the video. But this bit, as far as a step over, the step over when you're doing the 3D is actually very important. You need to have a step over between about eight and 10%. So far, far less, because you need to have that overlap. And that's part of the reason that you add so much time to the carving. Now I'm using a UGS, which is Universal G-Code Sender to be able to uh, carve this. And I've just opened it up and now I'm ready to hit open. And then I'm going to get this little alarm code and I just hit the uh, dollar sign and the X and that'll clear it out. Now from there, I want to be able to go ahead and move my machine over to my XY0 home position. Now because I'm using the center point on the XY0, I'm not going to be using my three uh, axis touch plate. What I'm actually going to do is just go ahead and align this to my XY0 position. And then I'm going to use the Z probe to actually probe and get the zero point for that bit. Okay, I now have the bit directly over my XY0 position. And all I need to do is just reset that in the uh, UGS as my zero point. And I'm going to go ahead and raise the bit now and then we'll do the Z probe. So over in my work position right here, this is what I need to be able to do, is just hit reset my X, reset my Y, and that changes it to basically zero. Now I'll go ahead and do the Z probe next. Now that we have that in place, I'm just gonna to go to the macros. And this is the one that does a Z probe only. So I'm gonna click on that. And there we go, that's now completed. So we can remove this to get this out of the way. And that brings me right down to my Z position. So we are ready to be able to carve. Next thing, I'm just gonna go over to the file mode, bring up the file. I just go over here to my VCar project files, click on my Eagle G code right there, and I can hit open, and you'll see it pop right into this window. Now I'm going to come over and hit my visualization so we can see what it's going to look like. So I just click on that tab right there, and it's going to take a minute for it to pop up, and it shows this yellow right in the center. That's where it's supposed to be, and then it'll carve from there. So that's exactly what we wanted to be able to see. So we'll close that. All I need to do now, turn the machine on and hit send. Now the actual carving time was one hour and 50 minutes. So I'm gonna go back and see if I can adjust that in the VCarve Pro. Now I wanna show you this right here. This is a tiny little flat spot that was in the carving. And that can easily be adjusted. And I'm gonna show you in VCarve, I'm gonna go back and open that up and show you. And all we're gonna do is just lower the height of this eagle just a little bit and that would solve that problem. Now I wanna show you one other thing that I've noticed. If you'll notice over here on this side, there's a little tiny groove and that is not seen anywhere else on the project at all. And that is an indication that this side of the project was raised up just a little bit. And that's what I was referring to earlier when you use screws to hold down your project 
if it's lifted up ever so slightly, then you can get that type of a groove in it. Okay, now that I'm in the project, I want to come over and just highlight this. And you see the little blue dot right there, the little blue square. I can highlight that, and that brings up this modeling tab. Now, this is the height of the shape, and all I need to be able to do is adjust that. Instead of 0 0.6997, I can bring that down to 0.69, and that should do it. If you want to even lower it a little bit more just to be on the safe side, I think I would go at it 0 0.6, and then for sure I know that I would be under that. So that's going to go ahead and update everything right now. And then we can take this and rotate it. And you can see that it's actually going to be below the surface this time. So that's how easy it is to be able to make that adjustment. So this is the first 3D carving that I have done. Uh, with this setup and it turned out I think fantastic now this is no sanding at all this is straight off the machine and I think it turned out great now I want to thank everybody for watching today and please hit that subscribe button so that we can continue on this series and learn more and more about the 3d carving and by subscribing and hitting that bell notification you won't miss out on a single episode Again, thanks for watching.